Hello and welcome back. Now, an exclusive poll by Ipsos for Sky News has found that public support for UK sanctions on Russia remains strong, but could erode if the cost of living crisis intensifies. Well, Kieran Pedley is research director for Ipsos, the company which carried out the survey, and joins us now. Kieran, good morning, good morning. to you. Thanks very much for being with us. Let's just bring up some of the stats that we've got and just talk our way through these ones. We bring up the first uh, graphic now. Um, so. Look, the, the fear is, of course, that there is a, perhaps going to be a change in the UK government, UK pu public support for the war in Ukraine should things get worse. Yes, and so one of the things we've been tracking over the course of the year is, 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 is that, is how much support there is for economic sanctions. And I think what you can see on screen here is back in March, 78% supported economic sanctions against Russia, um, but now that's fallen to 70%. Now, there's two points I would raise on this particular graphic. Mm -hmm. The first is that whilst there has been an eight-point decrease in support, that has not um, manifested itself in an increase in opposition to sanctions. So only 8% are actually opposed. And I think we have to put this in the wider context of the rising cost of living at the moment. There is strong public support for the people of Ukraine. People are very concerned about civilians. And this is a, this is a topic that has very much captured the imagination of the British people. So whilst there has been a slight softening in support for sanctions as the year has gone by, in absolute terms, seven in ten in support is a lot of people. And, and you describe it as a softening, don't you? It hasn't exactly fallen away, fallen off a cliff. But I guess it's to be expected uh, eight months into a war, isn't it, that's, that is affecting us here in many ways as well? Yes, I think one of the things we do see in the numbers is that people do see, uh, make the link between the war and the rising cost of living here. So when we say on a range of topics, you know, which, which of these topics are contributing towards the rising cost of living at the moment, eight in ten acknowledge that the Russian invasion of Ukraine is contributing towards the cost of living increase uh, alongside things like government policy or interest rates and other things as well. So they do recognise that the war is causing a rise in the cost of living, but there is still strong support for the people of Ukraine nonetheless. OK, let's bring up the next graphic here and we'll talk our way through this, this one now. The question here is, would you support continuing economic sanctions against Russia, even if they led to increased energy prices in the UK? So obviously one of the questions that people always ask is, OK, people support sanctions now, but what will happen in the future if mm -hmm. the cost of living crisis increases, uh, increases to worsen? Um, and what we found in March was that 73% said, no, we still support economic sanctions, even if energy prices rise. But of course, they have been rising over the course of the year. So what we find today is that that's fallen to 41% saying they would continue to support sanctions should um, the cost of energy prices increase. And you can see that the proportion that uh, oppose in that situation has risen to a third. I mean, would you, would you describe that as softening or is that eroding? That looks like it's fallen quite a long way. So at face value it looks like a sharp decrease but what I would say is that this is in the context of where prices have been. So mm. back in March when we asked this question prices were obviously significantly lower than they are today. I think the important point, the important nuance here is that whilst that does look like a significant drop and it is, in absolute terms as I've just explained there's still 7 in 10 supporting sanctions at the moment. This is about what happens if prices continue to increase. Now at the moment there's the energy price cap of course so that won't happen in the immediate immediate term, uh, we, we think. But of course, next spring, we might see a different story. Yeah, it's one, I guess, for government to be mindful if they can in some way keep those prices down. Let's take, bring up the last graphic if we can, Kieran, and talk our way through this now. The question here was, to what extent would you say you are concerned about the impact of the Russian invasion on? And then we've got a, a list of options there. Ukrainian civilians, the UK economy, UK national security, or oneself? Yes, I think the important point here is that, OK, people are concerned about, yes, uh, the UK economy and UK national security, and that's to be expected with all of the discussion about potential escalation to a nuclear conflict in the future. Mm. But what you can see on this graphic is the most the strongest level of concern is for the Ukrainian people themselves. 47% of the public say they're very concerned about the impact of the conflict on Ukrainian civilians. And this goes back to what we were saying at the beginning. Um, I think this has captured the imagination of people. They've seen the pictures on screen, and that's manifested itself in support for, uh, for, for those sanctions. But of course, that support isn't necessarily limitless. So if the cost of living crisis increases to buy, if, if prices increase, um, then, that, then that we might see that support soften further in the future. Mm. But for now, really important to stress, uh, the, pub, the British public are behind the Ukrainian people and support those sanctions. So perhaps that idea of uh, war fatigue is, is overplayed somewhat. All right, Kieran, for now, thank you very much. We appreciate